This is the Transformers Generations Studio Series number 86, figure number 04 from Transformers the Movie 1986, Voyager Class, Hot Rod, and War for Cybertron Trilogy Siege, Battlemaster, Fire Drive. Big thanks to Melikor Surprises for giving me a heads up on Fire Drive that I had to get him because he'd be a great, he's actually the target master uh, of Hot Rod. It was actually Firebolt, but... Uh, uh, or, or Sparky, whatever, and then they 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 changed it to Fire Drive, uh, probably due to copyright issues. But shout out to Melikor Surprises for letting me know that, and I was able to find one. Amazingly, um, uh, I searched everywhere. This had gone on clearance last year, uh, just before Christmas, and it was selling for about I don't know, like nine dollars. And then it went down to about five fifty, so not too bad. There was only one store that still had him. I was very lucky to still have it. Now this one I picked up at R Toys. If you remember my previous review of this figure, I know I've already done a review of it. Uh, I wasn't too happy with the quality issues about it. If you want to know more about it, just check out my video, my first video of the Studio Series Hot Rod. So let's crack these guys open and see if we got lucky. And here they both are out of packaging and these two look absolutely great together. I can't believe I didn't realize that I needed this Battle Master. It's the first Battle Master I'm reviewing and if you look closely at the at the gun, at the gun mode the figure, it resembles the same Target Master that came with the Legends Deluxe Class uh, Hot Rod from Takara Tomy. It's just done in obviously different colors. That one, I think, is still the better figure than this one. This one just looks very, very cheap. Let's have a look at Fire Drive first, just to get him done and over with. Uh, he's co he comes with these blast effects, which are actually pretty cool. Something the Takara Tomy did not have, I believe. And the transformation to robot mode, very straightforward, very similar to what we've seen with the Legends version. Colors look okay. Uh, the white plastic looks cheap, but it doesn't feel like it. It just looks like it, it's made of cheap plastic, but it's not. Articulation for the figure has got ball jointed shoulders, ball jointed hips, and that's about it. I remember the Takarotomi version had a translucent, transparent type of plastic for the uh, barrel of the gun, which I actually thought was pretty cool. One thing going for this figure, I believe, is this nice head sculpt and beautifully painted Autobot logo. That's a very, a very nice detail that Hasbro's put. If you can still track down this figure, I'm sure it's on clearance somewhere. And he'll look great with a Studio Series Hot Rod. Now on to Hot Rod himself. The joints still feel tight, sadly. Or maybe that's a good thing for a lot of collectors. The hip joint, the thigh swivel is just super tight. The waist joint is a little bit more loose. Uh, head sculpt looks okay. The only complaint I have for this figure in terms of Paint apps are the eyes, a bit of imperfection, just very slight. You can clearly see right there and there, but it's not a deal breaker. It's pass. It's a pass for me. It's acceptable. One thing I did notice is that the shoulders are still just super tight, and I don't think I'll be using that shoulder joint. Uh, a lot of the times when I'm playing with this figure, uh, I figured the best way to just move his, for his arms forward is just to move it outward like this and twist it like that. And that's it. You can hold, have his arm forward. And unless you absolutely need to move that hinge joint, don't. Because it, it just puts a lot of stress uh, on, on the joint right here, on that swivel joint. And the sad fact is, you know, the, I got rid of the Masterpiece figures because... You know, they were too expensive to collect. I could not afford them. And I, I just couldn't play with them all that much because I, I felt that if I'd broken something from that toy, it would suck because it was so expensive to get Masterpiece figures. And it, it really sucked out all the fun in playing with that figure. And I was kind of hoping that this figure would would kind of fix that dilemma because it would feel like a Masterpiece and yet you'd still be able to play with it, you know, without thinking too much about breaking it, but from the way it looks, it's, you know, it feels like I need to be more careful with this figure as well, just like a masterpiece figure, and that's gonna suck the fun out of this figure. 
So yeah, it's still good. Um, paint apps everywhere looks okay. And the big test really is transformation. So transformation, I have not transformed this figure once since I took it out of the packaging. I didn't want to run the risk of breaking anything. And uh, I wanted to show everything on film. So we're going to capture everything right now that happens to this figure as we transform him. Hopefully nothing breaks. Oh, back part, rotate like this. That. And then flip out this arm assembly like that. And then flip out the hood piece. Rotate those arms like that. Okay, and then the head, go ahead and fold it down like this. Okay. And then I guess we might as well go and fold this uh, assembly like this. Okay. All right. Okay, and then maybe we'll do the legs first. Like this. Very slowly. Don't want to break anything. Okay, do it this way. And snap. Same thing on the other side. Do it this way, and then snap. Okay. Fold these feet. Man, these are tight joints. And then fold the knees up like that. Fold them like this like this and fold it like this and then rotate a whole waist assembly waist piece and then just tap them in like this the spoiler section Let's see if we can do this without any uh, make it uneventful okay come on come on Sweating buckets right now. I don't want to break this. Okay, okay. And then tab in. Come on. Okay. Okay. That wasn't so hard. Is it easier this way or th this way? Okay, so. Rotate. I'm holding on to this joint so nothing untoward happens. Okay. All right. Okay. Is that good? I guess that's good. Same on the other side. Come on. Man. We've always been complaining about Hasbro's loose joints, and now they make it like super tight. Okay. Is that okay? Great. And then this piece right here. Uh, it's going to come over here. Same with this one. It's going to come over here okay collapse right here and like that okay we'll we'll do that later we'll fix that later still traumatized what happened with my first copy of the figure so just lock them in like this all right let's fix this one up here up here and tab it like this and yeah it still has the same flaws somebody had mentioned that there's a way to fix this by cutting you know making a bigger hole on the shoulder i don't want to do that with my luck i'm just going to ruin it permanently so i don't want to do that and you shouldn't have to do that i mean hasbro has been doing this for a long time they should have already figured this one out and yeah, okay. So, moment of truth. Come on, final steps. Let's go. Final steps, come on, come on. Okay. And is it done? There you go. There is Studio Series Hot Rod in his car mode. Yeah, still rolls okay. This is, I think, the best transformation yet. The gaps on... Uh, on the arms up to the this uh, I don't know the hood and the windshield is at a minimum yeah I guess you could fix that but I, I don't want to 
I'm not going to. I'm not going to ruin the figure and uh, keeping it as close to the original. Okay, so yeah, still rolls okay. It would have been spectacular if uh, there was a way to put fire drive. Like there would be a 5mm peg on top. And just like in the old uh, uh, G1 Target Master, we could put like a, like a, there would be a hole here or a hole here. And you could put a, that peg right in there or something like that. That would have been really nice. But uh, okay, no dice. I guess I got lucky with this with this copy. Okay, so final thoughts. My opinion hasn't changed about this figure. I think it sucks that you have to be so careful with it and you can hardly play with it. I'm gonna bump the score from a six and a half to seven because of Fire Drive. I think they look great together, but you know, it's not, for me, it's not the best figure in the wave. But it's, it's a good representation of Hot Rod. Is it like a masterpiece figure? Yes, definitely it is. The details, transformation, and engineering. And yet at the same time, you have to treat it like a masterpiece. You don't want to break it. And it just, to me, sucks out all the fun in this figure. The engineering on paper, I think looks great. But when they executed it, I think... You know, there was a lot of things lacking and could have been improved. I hope when they do uh, repack these figures, I'm pretty sure Hasbro is going to recycle these figures as target masters and pack these two together. I'm pretty sure something going to do like that. They're going to do something like that. I hope they make a running change and they try and fix the mold. Uh, the arms particularly. I just hope they, they improve on the engineering because it is really a wonderful figure on paper. And I think they spent a lot of time engineering it. And it could have been a great, great, fantastic figure had they fixed all those glitches in engineering. So let me know what you think of this figure. Again, hit me up in the comments. And as always, hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of my latest video reviews. If it's your first time here, please subscribe. And if you want to help the channel out, please check out my Patreon account. There's a link in the description box below. Thanks for watching. Let's have a look at Fire Drive first just to get him... Oops.